Hello again. History teaches us that when different cultures, religions or ethnicities share a country, there tends to be friction between them. This can range from the uh, usually mild irritation which French and Flemish speaking Belgians sometimes feel for each other on the one hand, all the way through to the bloody conflicts between Muslims and Hindus in India in the late 1940s which resulted in the loss of some two million lives and the creation of hundreds of thousands of refugees. It has been seen in Cyprus between Muslim Turks and Greek Christians, in Israel between Muslims and Jews, and in Nigeria, for example, between the Yoruba and Igbo, and the fighting between them and the Husa in the north. Also, um, in our own, in the United Kingdom, we saw this happening in Northern Ireland when there were 30 years of intermittent civil war between Protestants and Catholics. The most peaceful societies tend to be those which are completely homogenous, that is to say everybody of the same ethnicity, language and religion. England used to be like that. Despite the untruthful claims about the country always having been diverse, until a few decades ago almost everybody in England was white, English-speaking and Protestant. About 10% of the population were Catholics and there were communities of Jews, but these people simply integrated into the majority culture and were as English as anybody else. They didn't make any claims for special treatment and their religious faith was a purely personal matter. In the description to this video, I give a link to a short film made in and around London's Piccadilly Circus in 1967. It is a lost world. Everybody is white and they all belong to a single cultural tradition. Life in those days was quiet and there were seldom any stabbings or shootings. People lived their lives and minded their own business. The worst that you could say about England in those days was that it was dull. No terrorism, hardly any violent crime, few abortions, every child being raised by its mother and father. This culture was reinforced in a mild way by the morning prayers and singing of hymns in which all school children took part. For every child in the country, each day began with the Lord's Prayer and Bible readings. I have no idea at all if a deliberate decision was made at some stage to do destroy this pleasant country and fill it with mutual mistrust and communal violence. I can't imagine why anybody would wish to do such a thing and yet that is without the shadow of a doubt what has been done. English society is now fragmented into groups between whom there exists hostility which is liable to break out into murderous rage at the least excuse. The various communities fight amongst themselves and are also ready and willing to launch attacks on the majority culture of the country. A good example of this tendency was seen on Friday in North London. A social worker had gone to a home in Wood Green to check on the welfare of two children. A man on the premises went berserk at what he saw as an intrusion and launched a furious attack on those whom he viewed as representing authority. The social worker and two police officers were stabbed and the individual has been charged with attempted murder and grievous bodily harm. Like most people who saw the case, I knew at once that the person charged would not be called Dave Smith or Tom Brown. His name was Sule Bukhari. I'll give a link above to the case. This is one thread which we see when members of minority communities lash out against the host society. This is what led to the bomb at the Manchester Pop Concert which killed all those children and various other attacks both on the public and police. These people of course often fight too among themselves. Last month in the South London district of Streatham there was a fight with knives following which Denardo Samuels Brooks was killed, charged with his murder with Denzel Quatang and some other teenagers. So far this year, 21 teenagers have been murdered in London. The latest two last month were Tamim In Habibana, aged 15, and Keen Flynn Harling, 
age 16. Neither of them were white English, of course. Different nationalities, ethnicities and religions have different traditions and ways of life. Some cultures settle disputes with a frank discussion ending with shaking hands. Others resort to guns and knives. In the days when it was a homogenous white Christian society, England was pleasant and quiet. Now that it has been turned into a country full of various religions and ethnic groups, some of whom hate each other, and others who wish to fight against the majority culture, the country has gone to the dogs in no small measure. I have no idea why we have chosen to trash what used to be a calm, law-abiding country and turn it into what we see today, but I for one do not think that it has been an improvement. Multicultural societies do not work, they almost always lead to bloodshed and violence, and the one which we have established in England doesn't look as though it's going to be any exception to this general rule.